Welcome, welcome. We're live. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Friday night guitar workout night tonight. If you're new to the sessions, expand the description below here. We've got a PDF. <laughs> Morning, Anthony McSee. What's up? Cheers to you. All right. Ed R. Hello there. Let me know it's coming through all good. Elias, what's up? Uh, expand the description below this video and get the PDF. It's got some uh, some exercises, some tabs. Yes, we did. Strum and Susan, I hope you're doing well. Good to see you. Jim Gregory, what's up? Mr. Daniel, yes, yes, we did, in fact, miss you. Good to see you back. Erica, good to see you back. Excellent. Jazz House from Washington. Excellent. Harry, good to see you again. Ed R., loud and clear in Cali. I love it. Love it. <laughs> PDF's working. Good stuff. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, Susan, congrats. Back to strumming it up after the surgery. That's excellent news. Great to hear it. Dennis, hello there. Welcome. Jeff Moore, what's up? All good in San Fran? Rick Sticks is here. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> cool. What's up, Jody One? Good to see you. Craig from Melbourne. Good day. Excellent. All right, Glenn B. Glenn B working tonight, but still tuning in. <laughs> Sorry to hear Friday night you're working, but uh, Lisa, good to see you. Ray, first timer from Auburn, California. Welcome, Ray. Excellent. Uh, yeah, PDF is available. Expand out the description and follow along. Welcome. Uh, Sour Steven, what's up? Osman, good to see you. Excellent. And T. M. T. McMahon from Boston. Yes. Excellent. Good to see you again, too. All right. Well, thanks for joining. Yes, Peter. Excellent. Excellent. What's up? Okay. So uh, guitar, it's been a while since we've done a guitar workout. Uh, you always have to do this in the middle of the night. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Early evening here is Central Time, North America. <laughs> Jody One just tried a chicken pick and lick. How did it go? Pretty cool. Love that stuff, right? Just snap that high note, right? Mexico City, Igor, what's up? Good to see you. Excellent. Thanks for joining. <laughs> and Ken from New Jersey. All right. Great. Well, everybody's uh, here and ready to go. Uh, as you know, we always start the... Uh, Guitar workout with the some sort of a form of uh, chromatic getting the fingers going workout. This, of course, might be after you take a minute or two or 30 seconds or whatever it is just to shake them out, stretch them out a little bit, right? Get it ready. <laughs> right on, Rusty. Good to see you. Got some neighbors on here <laughs> from Jersey. All right, so... Uh, this one's a little bit of a you know, Zane. What's up? Good to see you. Thank you, Sour Steven. I appreciate that. Uh, so the chromatic warm up, uh, always doing some sort of variation. So this is what I came up with this time, starting on the fourth fret. Uh, of course, you can start this on the first fret if you'd like. I always started a little bit up the neck just to help out those of you who are brand new to the fretboard and you're still trying to get your fingers some basic mobility. It's a little bit easier in the middle of the neck where the frets are a little closer together as compared to down here where you can be stretching it a little bit more. Okay, so starting on the fourth fret and my sequence this time starting on the index on the fourth fret and then going up to the pinky ring and middle coming down. Okay, and then we're going to go up each string. What's up, NC? Welcome, welcome. Kind of it with that sequence, go up the strings, right? Now remember, check your picking. We want to work on our alternate picking. What's up, Katrian? Hello, welcome. Down, up, down, up, down, up. We want to get a steady flow of your alternate picking, down, up picking. This is one of the goals of this warm up is to just burn that in a little bit, as well as just some regular finger movement. What's up, Russ? 
Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. Okay. One, two, three. Oh, these are 16th notes, so it'll be one and one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and... Uh, Now what do we do? Well, we're going to move up one fret, but then we're going to do we're going to come back down the strings in reverse. So we're going to go to the eighth fret on a downstroke, and then on the next up down up, we're going to go fifth, sixth, and seventh. So we're going pinky index middle ring. So the idea is we're going to do that coming down, and then once we get to the end, we move up one more fret and start that same sequence, but now we're doing it off the sixth fret instead of the fourth where we started. Yes, it is. All right. Peter, what's up? I like it. Father's Day weekend, right? Coming back down. Indeed, Sour Steven. These chromatic warm-ups never cease to uh, twist the mind into some crazy melodies, right? Tasty indeed. <laughs> it's tasty for the mobility. We're not worried about melody, okay? We're tasty for mo the, the mobility going. Still alternate pick. Fingers can't do that yet. I got it, okay? So just be zeros. If you got to start there, right? You know, work on fretting a note and just make sure you're nice and clean. This is for the beginners out there, right? Some of you are joining us tonight and you're brand new to the guitar and you're checking this out for the first time. We just want to get some basic mobility. And in order to make a nice clean note on the fretboard, you get right in between the fret wires, like kind of right in the middle of the fret. And you don't have to smash it down. We don't have to go super pressing your finger in there to make it work. Just enough pressure so that you're not hearing any buzzing or kind of clinky, plunky kind of sound. Just enough that you get that nice pure note. That's what you're aiming for. If you, if you, get, if you get too much in there, it actually sometimes can affect the pitch make the pitch a little bit sharp. You can hear that, right? So just nice, just light enough pressure enough that it's not plunking out on you, okay? All right, so there's your chromatic warm-up. As always, nothing more to this exercise but working in some picking technique and getting your fingers moving. Uh, we usually do a sort of a straight ahead strumming exercise, right? So uh, I'm going to take this chord progression in the key of G. We're looking at exercise two on the handout, PDF handout. Expand the description below the video if you'd like to download that and have a look. Uh, we've got a G chord, and we've this G chord, particular G chord, is a little bit of a variation of what you would see as an open G. Instead of the open B string, we're fretting the D note, third fret of the second string, or the B string. This is still a G major, it's just sort of a, a different way to do this, because you've still got all the notes that make up the chord, right? We've got a root, third, fifth. So what are those notes for G? G, B, D. So those low three notes right there, third fret of the low string, second fret of the A, and then the open fourth string give you the notes you need for a G major. And then after that, you've got some higher octave extra notes. So you've got the root again, higher octave of G, higher octave of D, which is the fifth, higher octave even still of G, which gives you the high root. Okay, so gonna do that chord. We're gonna go to a D chord, D major. That's the open D string, second fret of the third third fret of the second string, and second fret of the first string. For those of you new to the guitar, we 
number the strings from the highest pitched string up top. I call this the top string, although a lot of people get confused. Think this is the top because it's kind of on top if you're looking at the guitar straight on. But I say top string synonymously with high string. We also label this one the first string. Right? As we come down, I'm going lower in pitch. So that's why I say the lower strings. And we end up on the sixth string. Okay, so there's your D chord, right? So we've gone from a G chord in the key of G to a D chord, which also known as the five chord. And then an E minor in bar six. Second fret of the fifth and fourth string, and then all the other strings are open. So make sure you curl your fingers enough so that that open G string rings out. Okay, if you don't have your fingers curled up enough, blocking that open G string. Make sure that's happening. That's your six minor chord in the key of G. And then C major, we know this one, third fret of the A string, second fret of the D, open G string, first fret of the B, open high E string. For some of us just starting out tonight, I'm not gonna worry so much about the uh, down ups here. I'm gonna get to it in a second, but just to get going, strumming these chord shapes, just work on down up and think about one and two and three and four So the idea is we want to get this motion going. This is how we keep nice steady time is by keeping this arm nice and loose. And keeping it going, okay? Even better if you're tapping your foot along with that because your limbs tend to get in sync, right? So that helps you a little bit. So there's a very basic way to look at this chord progression and start working on your strums. But if we want to take it a few steps further, let's have a look at the, the rhythm of this particular exercise, the way it's tabbed out in exercise two, bars four through seven on the handout. And what it says is we've got a mix of downs and then ups, and some of the strums are held out, right? And we also notice that we are changing the chords uh, in the fourth and sixth bar, uh, we're changing the chord on the last beat, okay? Uh, so we're actually changing that. Like that, even not, you know, we haven't even gotten to the first beat of the next bar, and we're already going to this D chord, okay? So down, down, up, up, down. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Glenn. I appreciate that. <laughs> Notice what I've got going on here. Okay, got this going. I appreciate it, Peter. Thanks for tuning in for just the small amount of time you could. I appreciate that. Happy Father's Day to everybody else, all you other fathers out there. <laughs> Erica, since I never use a pick when I play, would you please do a quick over on how to hold what part of the pick is playing and how tightly or loose to hold? Getting into sort of individual, like there's sort of a starting point that you want to think about, right? Like kind of a, you see how I have my thumb on the thumbs up and then I'm sort of bringing my index finger in sideways on that is sort of how you want to think about that, okay? And you want to have the tip exposed. As far as how hard to grip it, it really depends on what you're doing. Sometimes you can hold it just enough so that it won't fly out of your hand. And, you know, and that usually goes part and parcel with how relaxed you are with picking and strumming. And if you have to kind of dig in a little bit, you might have to press down and press those together a little bit more to give you some leverage to do things faster or to get aggressive with something, right? What's up, Kenneth? Yes, Susan. So definitely it's the kind of thing where 
you know, developing picking technique, you know, kind of go slow with it. And it's a really personal thing. You know, this is a good starting point to think about, you know, the thumb is one way and the fingers coming across at a 90 degree angle. Okay. And there you go. Practicing on the muted strings works wonders. Absolutely. So it, when you're not thinking about chords and where to put these fingers, you can focus on picking whatever it is or strumming or whatever it is. You can actually take some time to focus on that technique and work it out a little bit. Okay. So, all right. So getting to, so what I'm trying to say with this exercise is that we've got, yeah. For, so I use the tip, right? But there's no hard, fast rule on using the tip of the pick. That's going to give you a brighter sound, but if you use, you can use the corners or you can use the, the sort of rounder side if you want. That'll make it sound a little bit darker, but it's all personal preference music, right? Like, you notice there's a slight difference in the sound? It's depending on what part of the pick you're using. So experiment with that. It's totally wide open, whatever you whatever sort of you feel like could be cool. Go for it, right? And I'll move over this way a little bit, okay? So just getting back to these downs and ups. You wanna go nice and slow and you wanna keep this arm moving even though sometimes you're not strumming on that, okay? You see it's down, down, up, okay? So you just take it a little chunk at a time. Down, down, up. Down, down, up. Now it's down, down, up, up. Down, down, up, up. Down, down, up, up, down. Okay, so that's the tricky part because you're coming from an upstroke on the chord and on the ne very next downstroke, you're changing chords. So you might have to go a little bit slower on that, right? That's kind of the idea. Don't try to do it all at once. Take your time with it, exactly. Take your time, make sure you're getting that timing right on it, okay? Then move on to the next bar when you feel comfortable, right? Now the second bar of this particular example is a little bit easier because you're staying on that chord so you can just focus. You know, you've got it ringing out from before. Okay, when you feel comfortable with that, put it together. Here we go. Okay, that's the methodology. That's what we're kind of looking at there. And then once you burn it in, once you get that a little more under your muscle memory, a little bit more of the hang of that, Start working on the speed of it, right? So now we can maybe get it up a little bit. Okay. Add in the next two bars, have the exact same strum pattern. You're just doing it with two different chords. You're going from E minor to C now. So. So just notice I'm staying as relaxed as I can with this strumming arm and just going with it, okay? And sometimes you're going to dig in and strum the strings and other times you're not. And you have to develop that skill because that's the best way to keep them nice and smooth, okay? Excellent, Zemret. Good, good, good. The best thing you could do is slow it way down and take it just a chunk at a time. And even if you have to work on a chord, you know, it's just one of those chord shapes is just always tough for your fingers to get to. Then just loop it back and forth from chord to chord. Nice and slow. Give yourself time to get back and forth. But what you're doing is programming the muscles and the fingers so that it can get faster and faster and you don't have to think about it after a while. Okay? And it just takes lots of repetition, slow speeds. 
Okay. Good luck with that. Excellent. All right. Moving on to exercise three. I uh, had this idea. I uh, was kind of thinking about sort of a, a, some examples of sort of riffs uh, that you can use uh, with double stops. And one of them is, is a thirds, uh, harmonizing in thirds, and the other one's harmonizing in sixths. And they're both very common and can be used lots. So uh, this example shows that. And just to follow up, Anthony, with your comment, absolutely. They call that an anticipation when you're switching chords not on the top of the next bar, not on the beat, okay? Uh, like, for example, the end of four. In this case, actually, the fourth beat of the bar is an anticipation because we're hitting that chord change a little before the downbeat of the next bar, right? Like a beat before. So they, yes, they call that an anticipation or a push. That's the other sort of phrase that gets tossed around with that kind of thing. So yes, anticipation or push. If, if you hear that terminology on changing chords, that will alert you that uh, chord change is happening not right on the downbeat of a bar. It's happening a little bit before, okay? Good stuff. Exercise three. Okay, or double stops. Let's look at the first one. Okay. So this is the first two bars. I've kind of got it like this. Right? And what we're doing is, is playing double stops. If you've never heard of double stops before, this is basically playing two notes simultaneously. Okay. And essentially what we're doing is playing a melody and then adding a harmony to it and playing both of those at the same time, right? So if I would just to just look at the third string on this melody, okay? That's what the, mel the lower melody sounds like. Yes, brown eyed girl. <laughs> That's the idea behind this one a little bit, okay? Yes, you guys caught it, right? So what I'm doing is, uh, let's just say I'm going to let you in that this is the key of G, okay? So I'm using G major, okay? These are all notes from G major. There's your G note. If you go backwards, that's the major seventh from the scale. If you go up, you got the second, you got the major third. Now what I'm doing on the B string is adding the third harmony onto that in the key of G. So I'm just going up the G major scale a third, which means I skip the next note from the note I'm starting with and go to the note after that. So it turns out in the key of G, those notes are, okay? So you hear that harmony, you put them together, Really great stuff here to be able to sort of uh, think about embellishing on a chord, right? Or outlining a chord progression, maybe something like that. Um, notice that I start on a G and a B, so that works really well over a G major chord, okay? And then I kind of go up the scale, and now I've got B and D. Those are still notes in G major, so that works great still over a G major chord. And look where I end right here is our two notes from a D major, okay? So, so maybe it's a G chord to maybe an E minor, a relative minor, those notes still work. And then D chord underneath, okay? So I'm just sort of exposing you to some uh, some stuff that you're going to see in songs. Uh, the guitar players use this kind of thing all the time in riffs, in solos, in embellishing, okay? Um, as for the fingering, Anthony, let's look at that. I'm barring down on the 12th fret, and then I use the ring and the middle on the G and B strings, respectively. But then when I come down to the D chord, I mean, I could still use middle and ring, but I'm coming from here 
So it's a little bit easier for me to just slide that index finger down two frets and go index on the B string, middle on the G. So the fingerings for all these things, you sort of have to um, look at what's around what you're trying to do because it's all the context of what you're trying to play that will dictate what fingers to use. I mean, I use the middle and the ring on those upper ones when I'm barring down with the index, but you could just as easily shift and use just index and middle for everything, right? Okay. But I've kind of trained my fingers a little bit using using the getting the ring finger involved. So there's no strict um, sort of template for which fingers to use. It's just uh, you know, at first, especially if you're a little bit, uh, if this feels a little unnatural for you, or you're, you're not quite, you know, trying to master this kind of these kind of moves, um, go with what feels the most natural out of all of that, and just develop that to the point where you can do it, you can execute, you know, without too much problem, and just give it some repetition and go slow, and train those fingers to grab that. Okay. So the next two bars of this, I switch over to sixth intervals, okay? Yeah, which is also very common. And so I've got a little bit, I, I changed up the melody a little bit on the G string here. So now it goes. Okay. And if we add notes uh, a sixth away, and we're in the key of G once again, so you have to go up the G major scale, right? One, two, three, four. Five, six, you end up with the 10th fret of the high string, okay, up there. Uh, so I'm going 11th fret of the G, 10th fret of the high string, and then both strings, 14 and 12, and then that final one is 1650. So you've got these similar kind of shapes, right? These are used all the time as well. We use sixth intervals a lot. Again, just a really nice sound and kind of adding melodies and embellishment, okay? So this one with the uh, high string added in. Okay. And so we're starting on D this time pretty much. You know, if you, once again, if you think about the D major bar chord in that position, and pull out the G string and the high string, you get those exact notes, right? And the same thing up in the 15th position, if you had a G major bar chord, you've got those notes up there as well. And those notes in between, okay? Just are just notes from the scale that are sort of transitionary, right? We're just making a melody out of this thing. Let's talk a little bit about how to pick this because you have some options here. I sort of always default to hybrid picking on this because you've got that B string in the in between these two notes that you're not using. So I find a really clean way to do this is to pick on the third string or the G string and use a finger to pluck simultaneously on the top string. <laughs> Sophia, where were you? I was asking for you last week for about the last train home. Good to see you this week. <laughs> I'll tell you in a bit. I'm just going to finish my thought uh, on this, and then we'll, we'll, we'll wax a little John Mayer, all right? Okay, so I'm using a pick on the third string, pluck on the high string, and it's nice and clean to do it that way. But, of course, you can also pick all three of these strings and just curl your finger that's fretting on the G string, curl it so that you've got the flesh on the B string as well. So... I And that works just fine too. What's up, John from Jersey? Hey, what's going on, man? Good to see you again. All right, I didn't play that right, but okay. Got a couple options there to sort of burn in the uh, technique a little bit. Okay. <laughs> All right. So just some ideas. You're going to see these kind of things as you learn songs, as you watch YouTube videos of guitar players you like. You will see double stops. You will see third uh, intervals being used in solos, embellished. You will see the sixth 
interval shapes. And they're super useful. Get to, you know, pick a key and kind of figure out where that stuff is in the fretboard and get used to it a little bit. And you'll start to see it more and more. It'll start to burn in a little bit more and more. Okay. Cool, cool. All right. On to number four. Uh, cheers, everybody. So we didn't get a chance to talk about John Mayer's new uh, 80s, <laughs> 80s uh, song, but uh, very interesting. Uh, I'm not really a fan of the song so much. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm all down for the 80s production because I'm an 80s child <laughs> or I learned to play guitar in the 80s. So I, I have a, uh, I'm a little bit biased towards 80s music a little bit. <laughs> This, Anthony, this one might might not be glass. This might not be glass. Not sure. Doesn't sound like it. Could be a uh, picnic proof crystal right there. Um, what do you think, Sophia? Not your favorite, but you love the lyrics. Cool. Right on. Excellent. Good, 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 good stuff. Yeah, he's definitely channing, channeling the 80s Clapton era of uh, guitar playing. <laughs> uh, so, uh, if eighties Clapton was your thing, it's, uh, he's definitely channeling that vibe for sure. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I kind of thought the song was just kind of, eh, you know, but all good. All right. Johnny, Johnny. <laughs> People say it sounds like Toto. There you go. Africa. Absolutely. Definitely had the Toto vibe, right? All right, I got the AC pumping out in the garage, and it's still hot in here, so I apologize for the uh, apologize for that. Okay, exercise four, everybody. Uh, got an A minor arpeggiation riff, and show you some cool stuff you can do with open strings. That sounds pretty cool, especially in A minor, because in the in the A minor scale, you've got a B note, right? That's the the two or the nine. You've also got an E, which is the fifth. So you can use those, uh, you know, we're applying these open strings to sort of some shell of some uh, chords in A minor. So the first one is, and I think uh, I showed this chord actually a couple weeks ago in the chord workshop, where you've got the open A string and then you've got the seventh fret of the D, fifth fret of the G, uh, which is part of, what's up, Steve? Welcome, welcome. Good to see you. When you add in that B note, right? Because, you know, there's an A minor, straight A minor right there. But when you get that open B string, it really gives it a mysterious sound, right? Adding the nine to that A minor chord. Okay. So let's arpeggiate it. And what's cool about this arpeggiation pattern is that it's straight up the strings and then back down. So you can go... The way I like to do that is just straight down strokes all the way. And when I get to the top string, you start the upstroke and come back. Right? So that's the first chord is that A minor with that open B string gives a really cool, mysterious kind of sound, right? And then we're going to move up two frets. You're going to you get your pinky involved here. Tenth fret of the A string, and then you've got the same shape on the D and G string. It's just up two frets. You've got the ninth fret of the D seventh fret of the G, and still your open strings. So what is this chord that we're fretting right here? This turns out to be a G major triad, right? We've got G, B, D. And I'm adding a B note, which is already in the chord, but then adding the E note up top and gives it a, uh, a six, right? So. So let's just listen to the first couple bars, like when you're changing those chords, you know, after one set of picks. Now you notice in the third bar of this example, we're just moving that chord shape down two frets. So it's basically the A minor chord, but we've got an F as the root. So this turns out to be an F major triad right here. You're adding a B to it, so that's a little bit... Uh, gives you a Lydian sound, I think, there. And then the E, which gives you the major seven sounds. So. But it all works out really well. You're in the key of A minor, so those notes 
uh, really work well. Richard Steller, what's up? Good to see you. Excellent. <laughs> Thanks for jumping on. Great to see you. <laughs> I guess great to see your comment. <laughs> Hope you're doing well, my friend. All right. So we're basically, this chord progression is A minor, G major, F major, but you're just adding those extra notes in there to make it sound kind of cool, mysterious. You're tying together all of those uh, chords together with these sort of pedaling on these notes. <laughs> yes, Sophia, it is heavy danger right here, indeed. <laughs> okay, and then just ending off in that last bar. Okay, just uh, you know, back to the A minor, but not starting on the A string. Start on the D string. And then I come down to the fifth fret of the D, fourth fret of the G string. And this is sort of just two notes coming out of G major in the third position, right? And adding that. So it's really sort of similar to this one. In fact, it's this, these notes being played here, exact same notes, right? So put it together, it's kind of a cool little arpeggiated riff, right? Like. Cool. So you work on, you know, really uh, sort of on the, on the easier side of an arpeggiation pattern that's just straight up and then turning around and coming straight back. And getting the sound of some pretty cool chords with some open strings. All right. Exercise five. All right. What is the last chord, bar four? That's still a G chord. Uh, and you're sort of doubling up on, on the B note. So it's a G, a B, and instead of a D, it's an E. So I guess that would be a G... Uh, G add six or G six no fifth or something like that. I'm not exactly sure how you would name that one. Sometimes it's cool just to move shapes around with open strings and see how it sounds, right? Don't think too much about the theory. But I know that I'm outlining a G chord right here. I'm just adding an E note to it. All right, number five. Uh, cool little exercise here on uh, a couple of things. First of all, some octaves and then adding in some slides. So there's a number of things going on here that, we, uh, uh, that we're gonna practice. So let's just take each little thing at a time. The first thing uh, we're gonna look at is the octave shape, okay? So you can see that the fretted notes of this example, uh, which is exercise five, bar 16 and 17 on the handout, which you, if you're just joining us, if you expand the description below the video, there is a link to a PDF handout uh, that we're running through right now. Uh, so I'm starting on the fifth fret of the fourth string, eighth fret of the second string. And this is an octave shape with the root on the D string. <clears throat> so what you've got is a G note starting off with, and you've got the next octave of the G note, which is three frets up two strings up, right? We skip the next string and we go to the string after that and go three frets up. That's the octave shape when your root is on the fourth string because of the pesky B string, right? All the other strings, you can do octaves two frets apart. But if you end up on the B string, you've got to account for that the way that it's tuned. Right? So there you go. Now we're going to be strumming this with the open A string. You can see that. And so in order to do that, you're strumming from the A string, D string, G string, and B string, but we don't want the G string to ring out. So it's that trick again, where you have to curl this index finger to, to just get a little bit of flesh on that G string so it won't ring out, okay? So again, not too, not too flat so that you're adding a note because that changes what we're doing. We don't want that. And not too little where it's coming out. So you gotta have it in there. So we mute that, right? Next thing you'll notice about this exercise is we add in a slide. So we're sliding up two frets using that same shape. 
okay? And then we're gonna add in some strums. So a down stroke, a slide, and then another down up. Okay? On the very next down stroke, we're gonna do another slide. So we're gonna slide this shape all the way up to the 14th and 17th fret up here. Okay, so let's look at that. Okay, so that's what we're going for here a little bit is jazzy-ish. Yeah, we got to, you know, actually the jazz guys would probably do that kind of thing. Maybe with some hybrid picking or, uh, you know. But uh, actually this sounds pretty good with a little bit of distortion, right? If you kind of make it. That kind of thing. It could be kind of a rock thing too, right? So just sort of depending on how you uh, play it, how fast you're playing it, and with what kind of tone, right? So that's what we're going for there. It's, it's, there's a lot going on there. So we want to just, you know, take it slow, right? And make sure that you've got the octave shape going. Make sure that you can slide that up two frets. Okay. Even just that is kind of a cool little start to something. Thought that would be a kind of a cool little exercise to throw in there. You got a lot of things going on there, so just take take it. If you have to take a chunk at a time, just do that. Go nice and slow, but uh, pretty fun stuff once you get it up to speed and burn it in a little bit. All right, cool, 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 excellent. Okay, exercise six. <laughs> Slash does it on knocking on his heaven's door. Yeah, something very similar. You're absolutely. You're right, just those sliding octaves, right? Playing a melody. Uh, a little bit different here just because we, we're in including sort of a pedaling open string on it, right? Like still strumming an open string with it, right? But indeed, that kind of, uh, you know, right? Even Foo Fighters, right? If you want to think about rock, you know. What is that? I guess he doesn't really do the sliding on it, but there you go. <laughs> Anthony, absolutely, yes. Muting the G string is the trick. So start off just with octave shapes and trying to get that you can you can strum it and not have that string in the middle ring out. That's the key. It's the same thing with the sixth intervals we were talking about earlier, right? Same idea. You've got to somehow just not make that middle string ring out. Okay, cool. All right, so I thought uh, since we're talking about sort of playing some chords with open string, or I guess that was octaves, but working off sort of a pedaling open string, let's move some chords around. So I'm moving some triads around here in exercise 6A. That's kind of the idea here. So we're pedaling, got this groove going on the open D string. I'm starting with D major, and I'm just simply moving that shape up. Sounded like Van Man. <laughs> cool. Just cool things to be had when you move this shape, when you move the same shape up and down. It's really fun to experiment with the kind of sounds you can get. Uh, they call me the working man. What's up? Carl King in the house. <laughs> All right. So you've got sort of this D major, and then you step outside D major a little bit and get more of this uh, F major, D minor 
uh, sound going. And then G major up here, right? You got G, F, D. You're just pedaling it against that D, uh, open D note, and uh, you get a cool sound, get a little riff, and don't just, don't stop there. Like, see what everything sort of sounds like. That one's really cool, right? Just two frets up from the D, you got an E major. Seen that one, go all the way up to the ninth fret, put an A over D right there. That one works great at the 10th fret, 12th fret, and boom, you're up an octave. So uh, pretty amazing how cool like just one chord shape can sound against an open string, right? Now, in the second example, 6B, okay, I'm changing the triad shapes a little bit, and I'm thinking, uh, I'm staying in the key of D major and thinking 1, 4, 5 this time. So just changing the notes of the chord. So once again, starting with D. Same shape up here for G major, which would be the four chord, right? From D going to G, that's the four chord. And then the five chord is A major. I can actually keep that same shape and go up two frets, but I can also come down and change the shape to still get A major. So now I've got a different triad shape here, sixth fret of the G, fifth fret of the top two strings. So. Keep that same shape, bring it down two frets, and you've got a G major in a different spot of the neck, right? So you've got sort of, you can use these different triad shapes to uh, just suggest upward and downward kind of motion within like a chord progression you know, just depending on where you are on the neck, right? Like, I could have went that way, but I, instead I went. So it's cool. It's got like a different thing about it than just. Right? So knowing your triad shapes across all, you know, the, the three, uh, three string sets, right? Uh, can open up lots of things for you to kind of just move around a chord progression and come up with cool stuff, right? And yeah, in th this case, in 6B, I'm just using two different, uh, you know, instead of just using one triad shape, I'm using two, two major triad shapes. Whoops. Very Pete Townsend, absolutely. You know, like... Uh, He did all this stuff, right? So if you want to talk about Pete Townsend, he used those different triad shapes to kind of, you know. Right? Substitute and tons of other songs, right? And then he even, he did tons just staying on the D shape. Right? If you think, uh, you know. bit of who there for you okay so yeah that's the idea is that it just kind of unlocks some cool sounds cat stevens that's a good one right i'm an 80s guy so i think extreme you know that kind of stuff yeah there's tons of examples of these kinds of ideas cool cool all right let's get into exercise seven here so uh uh, Anthony, uh, who's on here, regular on here, uh, super appreciate uh, you tuning in every week, but uh, just had a little exercise here, a little specific that there's sort of a, a little embellishment thing that's very common. And uh, so I've got an example of this here uh, with a D chord. And what you're doing is arpeggiating. <laughs> That's the idea of what we're trying to do here, 
And what can be really tough for something like that is if you get this going fast, you might not have the strength or the quickness to be able to execute that hammer on pull off on the top string cleanly. And what you're doing is you're playing off this D shape and sort of adding a melody using, and it needs, you need to hammer onto the second fret and then pull it off. And it's not really the most easy thing to kind of get under the fingers. So I sort of broke it down into, this is something that you can practice nice and slow to develop that sort of feel with your fingers, okay? And off the D shape, the key is just getting some mobility out of the middle finger, being able to hammer on and pull off and do everything nice in time, okay? So for the hammer on and pull off, I'm, you know, I'm just sort of hammering on with a little bit of force so that you can hear that note, right? If you do it, you kind of don't do it with enough force. Got to have a little bit of jam on that, right? What's up from Thailand? Excellent. Welcome. And then you've got to sort of pull downwards and pluck the string with that finger, if that makes sense. That's the pull off. You're pulling off the string by sort of plucking it off the fret. Now, what makes it difficult? Yes, absolutely, right? Like, Tons of examples of this kind of stuff. But what makes this difficult is that you're holding a chord and trying to do that, okay? So what you gotta do is you gotta go slow and just train, burn in this move, okay? Because uh, in the case of Anthony, right, we're working, working on a song that, you know, it's actually finger picking, you know, and you can practice this finger picking. Don't have to do, do uh, picking like what I'm doing. But this is just one part of like a whole section of a song, right? It's like, you know, it's pretty straightforward to do all the chord changes. And then when you get to that D chord, there's just this little embellishment in there that, you know, uses 16th notes instead of this, you know, you're, Otherwise, you're doing your finger picking eighth notes all through a big, you know, longer chord progression. Pull this little part out, slow it down, and just really try to burn in that part of it, right? Because one, the, 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 the better you can get it, just making this nice and smooth with really nice timing, that's what makes the difference for, for you know, giving you that last 10 to 15% to make it sound, you know, really cool, right? If you have to go slower, do it. Like just play this bar over and over and over again. And the key is you have to hold down this chord shape and you have to play it like you're gonna play it fast, right? And But just burn it in nice and slow with lots of repetition. You do that a couple minutes a day, I tell you, you know, within a week, you'll, you will see an improvement, right? It'll feel a little bit smoother, a little more in time, right? You'll get a little bit of speed going on it. Size 7B, same thing, right? We've got, uh, now I'm going to play off an open A chord and do the same move, this time on the B string. Open, second fret, pulling off. Now I'm working the pinky. This one is really tough, actually, to what I have trouble with this. It's your pinky is so is the weakest of the bunch, right? So this is a great exercise to just try and get that going, right? I definitely notice a difference between being able to pull off with my middle finger versus the pinky. Right? I have to hold down the, the high E string because that's tough to get it with some force and not have that high E string ring out. So So super useful little embellishment. I just thought I would pick it out of, you know, a longer song example and just go, just work on that little thing. This is a great thing to practice to really be able to develop that, you know, sort of little embellishment, right?
hopefully you found it helpful, uh, Mr. Anthony. Cheers to you. All right. Got a couple minutes left on a couple more exercises. Uh, blues turnaround. So now we're in, you can see above where it says blues turnaround, we've gone into a triplet feel, a sw uh, shuffle feel. So instead of straight, you know, you've got the shuffle feel where you're going, where that, you know, the second eighth note is pushed a little bit closer to the, to the next one, right? So... So what's cool about this is that you look at the lower strings. Check out what's going on. Very familiar blues turnaround sound, right? But listen, you're starting at the root, going to the major third, and then from there going chromatically up to the fifth, and then adding in that little move on the five chord where you go up one fret and come back down. This chord, incidentally, as we talked about in the chord workshops previously, right? E9, E dominant ninth chord, seventh fret of the A string, sixth fret of the D string, barring down on the top three strings on the seventh fret. Great chord, right? We're just going up one fret with it and coming down. F to E, right? F9, E. But you've got that lower one. Now check out the high notes at the same time, starting on the root, but going backwards, going downwards. Right? Pretty cool stuff, right? So you could use either of these as a turnaround. You don't have to necessarily combine them like what I've done, right? Another good one to do is bar down on the fifth fret of the top strings. Like that. That sounds great all by itself. But when you combine both of these together, you've got this weird kind of counterpoint going on. Oh, whoops. A little bit of a stretch there, right? Fourth fret of the A and the eighth fret of the B. Really cool. Okay. And you sort of have to do this one with hybrid picking. Um, are these available out on the live stream? Uh, yes, they are. You will see this video will stay up on YouTube and the link is still active after this is uh, all said and done, okay? So you can definitely download the PDF and rewatch the video, okay? So uh, you kind of have to use hybrid picking for this. It's really difficult to strum all six strings when you're on the top and the low string all at the same time and not have something ringing out, right? So, you know, even just use all fingers, like your thumb and one of your fingers. Something like that. Cool. I think it's a pretty uh, cool little blues turnaround. And we're in the key of A there, right? We're starting on the root note. And then ending on that five chord, and then it, you, you go back to an A7 or something like that, or Sour Steven, how long do they stay active? Good question. Do I know? I think they're up there. I think once they're up there, they're up there. I, I have the uh, PDFs in Google Drive, and, and they're all still up there from the all previous uh, sessions, so Hopefully, uh, you just go to the YouTube page of the video, and that link should still be active. So I assume as long as we're still doing these, they'll be up there. Uh, Guitar Tricks channel's been around for years and years and years, so we, we just keep adding stuff to it, right? So I think they'll stay up there. All right, everybody, thanks for joining. That was awesome. How do I bar the bottom of the strings constantly? Uh, as far as uh, Aaron, uh, hmm. <laughs> yeah, no super chats, but I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, how do you bar the bottom strings consistently? Uh, what are we talking about? Uh, if you could be a little more specific, when, when I was playing a bar chord, or are you talking about maybe I'm muting the low strings? Uh, 
let me know in the comments. I'll revisit it in a sec. I just want to finish off. I do have one more lick in the handout here. It's a bluesy rock lick that I think is pretty cool, and it's definitely worth having a look at. So if you're into lead guitar, uh, something like this is really cool. E minor pentatonic, E blues. <laughs> So if I play it fast, whoops, ah. there it is. Twelfth fret of the high string, pull off fifteen to twelve on the B string, landing on fifteen on the G, fifteen. Total Angus, you got it. Angus, Evelyn, you got it. Fifteenth fret of the G string, okay. So that blues note adds in that bluesy thing, right? Up to the 12th fret there. And then you've got this pull up. 15 pulling off to 14, pulling off to 12. And that's an eighth note triplet. So you're fitting three notes in the time of two eighth notes. So it's a little bit faster there. Right? Ending on the E note, 14th fret of the D string, up to A, 14th of, of the G string, back to 14 on the D. Ending off on the G note with vibrato, 12th fret of the G string. So, okay, really cool lick. Sounds great slow. Whoops. Or try to work on the speed of it, right? That kind of stuff. So definitely an ACDC style bluesy lick. But you play it slow, it could, you know, be like just a straight up blues lick, right? Um, so uh, there you have it. That's We've gone through everything in the, in the handout, the PDF. I hope you find it useful just for some things to work on. Uh, I appreciate everyone for joining tonight. I wish I could answer this uh, this question from Aaron about how do you bar the bottom strings consistently? I'll just say this. If I'm getting from your question, when we're talking about maybe bar chords, how do you get those bar chords consistent? You've got to train those fingers. You've got to like fret a bar chord, okay? And check every note and make sure every note's ringing out nicely. And if it isn't, if you got like something like that, you got to make an adjustment. Roll the finger, move that finger up and down, look where your thumb is, try, you know, try changing the arc of the fingers, whatever you have to do in order to make all those notes ring out. And once you happen upon it, once you get it, you've got to figure out, okay, how are my fingers, you know, how are they arranged right now? Try to make a mental note of it, off, shake it out, and then try to go right back to it. It's sort of the uh, repetition of going back and getting those fingers in the same spot right away. That's the trick of it. That's how you make it consistent, okay? How do you bar those bottom strings consistently? That's how you have to do it. You have to train the fingers, okay? And in order to do that, you have to get the fingers in the right spot, and you need to just figure out how to hold those fingers in there so that all the notes are nice and, nice and clean, and once you figure it out, boom, practice the repetition of getting on there over and over, okay? So, yeah, it has to do with the curls of the fingers, right? Because a lot of times, sometimes you're just too flat and those high strings get muted. And other times it could be in the little ridge of your finger, right, that is not getting it clean. So maybe adjusting how to get that index finger, okay? Uh, it comes down to where the thumb is behind the neck. It comes down to how your hand is sort of positioned against the, the fretboard, right? Yeah, have more trouble with the two fingers on E and B for E, B, and G. Yeah, like that kind of thing, maybe. That part, right? So try like moving that index finger up and down. Try to find a spot from where it's happening. Another thing that helps is to use this arm to kind of just press against the body of the guitar a little bit. You'll feel the, the, the fretboard come into your fingers a little bit more. Just a little bit of pressure there might help you, okay? 
<laughs> All right, hopefully those tips help. Uh, search the Guitar Tricks channel. I've got like a whole thing on bar chords and, and ways to practice it, and ways to get them under your fingers. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. But yeah, thanks to everybody. Cheers for uh, hanging out tonight. <laughs> right on, everybody. I appreciate you uh, tuning in, and we'll see you uh, once again Friday. Uh, I think we'll probably do another chord workshop next Friday because uh, you can always do more chord stuff, right? <laughs> I appreciate it, Steve. I appreciate it, Jazz House. Ed, thank you. <laughs> Paul, hey, what's going on? Right on. Good to see you here. Have a great weekend. You too, Anthony. Everybody, have a great weekend, and we'll see you next uh, on Friday, a week from tonight. All right? Take care, everybody. Boom. See ya. <laughs>